43 on the active shooter, apparently. I'll next to the field. Sir, we're trying to get it. They haven't asked for anybody to give us an opportunity to get the 43. Units be advised, District 17 is working an active shooter at Stoneman Douglas. We have a victim. The shooter's at the football field. Be advised, I'm reading through a lot. So, confirming one patient with a GSW at this time at the 1200 building. District 17 has not asked for additional at this time. I'm still reading the call to get further. They're advising at the gate for the student entrance is unlocked. They it only advising a male is in a hoodie, a possible AR-15 or AK-47. I'm looking for a description of the subject, and I'll find out if any other additional units are needed. Units, stand by. So, um, according to my teacher, that morning, um, for some reason, thank goodness, um, the school decided to, like, reinforce, like, all of the security measures that they previously made. The fact that the first floor bathroom and the third floor bathrooms were locked, why are they locked? Uh, that was a decision by the security to, we've had issue at the, before that with kids smoking in the bathrooms, so they were trying to make it so that the kids had to go to one bathroom to limit that. Kids would come from all over campus to go to those bathrooms. They were air conditioned. They were nice bathrooms. And there were drug deals going on. And they felt that this was a way to control it. New tonight, a source of comfort, trust, and security at two Parkland schools is about to go away. Since the shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School, members of the Guardian Angels have been patrolling its perimeter as well as at mid a middle school across the street. That will change next week. CBS 4's Carrie Codd explains. Guardian Angel David Clemente, otherwise known as Cobra, is a familiar presence outside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School and West Glades Middle School. Since February 14th, he's voluntarily watched the gates, kept his eyes and ears open for trouble, and pledged to protect those inside the schools. I gave the parents my word that I would do anything and everything to keep their kids safe and to keep their kids alive. But Cobra recorded controversy last week with this Facebook post. It reads in part, there's a big drug problem at Douglas High School. Drugs are being taken and drugs are being sold inside of the school. Cobra said students brought the problem to his attention. I had been contacted by some students that I had met with with the parents with tears in the eyes telling me that there was a problem in Douglas Stoneman High School with drugs and they witnessed it themselves. Cobra said he told the school security staff about the drug problem last school year. He said he saw little being done, so he decided to inform the community so that parents could address the issue with their children. But five days after the post, Cobra said MSD principal Ty Thompson spoke to him. Informing the guardian angels that services is no longer needed at the high school. 
So um, this is right after the post. In my personal opinion, he needs to be here. Amy Moray has a son at Stoneman Douglas. She says Cobra has been a calming and reassuring presence on campus, and she can't understand why anyone would not want him here. He gives my son and myself a peace of mind when he's here. You know, I, I view him as the eyes and the ears of the school. Alex Schachter is one of the Stoneman Douglas victims. His father, Max, says Cobra's departure sends exactly the wrong message to the MSD community. There is a, a double standard. The principal is telling the children if you hear something or see something or uh, say something, and uh, that's exactly what Cobra did, and now he's getting fired for it. Schachter wants Cobra to stay. He's urged people to email the principal, and on Tuesday, someone posted this petition on change.org for Cobra to remain. Cobra says he'll abide by the principal's decision, and he's touched by the outpouring of support from the community. I'm aware by the people and the love of this community. I reached out to the Broward School District for some answers on all this. A spokesperson would not confirm that it was the Facebook post that got Cobra removed from the exterior of the campus. We were told that the principal did speak to Cobra about removing some sort of encampment on the exterior of the school. We also requested to interview the principal at Stoneman Douglas, but that request was not addressed. Live in Parkland, Kerry Codd, CBS 4 News tonight. We had a meeting earlier, a staff meeting earlier that morning. We'd been warned that we were going to have a code red drill. I thought, this is a weird time for a code red drill because at the tail end of the day. But I was like, okay. So I just assumed that they were using blanks. I was in my homeroom, like not my homeroom, I was in my class and the fire alarm rang and we thought it was like, oh, just another drill and then we just started hearing gunshots and we didn't take it that seriously because the school said that they were going to let out blanks. So we were just laughing about it and then. So you were hearing that there was going to be some sort of real life drill um, happening at school today. So you didn't think anything of it? No, I didn't think that much of it because. Was it strange that this was happening right 20 minutes before the bell rang is what, what here, uh, students are telling me? Yeah, like, because that's a little off, like, because I usually leave class a couple minutes early, and I was like, okay. Bro, G shit, bro. I think they actually did know some shit was going to happen. Like, because right before the shooting happened, my teacher was like, hey, don't leave your class early. It was a case of some shit happening. And then, like, right after that shit happens, I, I feel like it was suspect. Who had it? Like, I had Mitch Albert, bro. My teacher was talking about cold reds and shit. And, like, don't, because you know how niggas. Be dipping early, like before the bell. He was like, "Don't dip early." We got all the doors locked in the school. We've been we've been, we've been doing training for this for the last two weeks, so wow. it, and it, it kind of like came, a, uh, came to play uh, today. and something black on his face. I also heard from a teacher that he said something along the lines like, no one's here. She says she clearly heard him make a comment like, nobody's here or something along those lines. But I've been in a simulation before. I know what that gunfire sounds like. And so I had honestly thought that it was the beginning of a drill. All of a sudden, I see the shooter emerge from the stairwell. And I just remember looking at him and just looking at this figure that is just so menacing. His face was covered. 
I describe him as wearing a gas mask because that's what it looked like to me at the time. But his face was definitely covered. His head was definitely covered. I didn't see any skin. He was black from head to toe, black vest, black pants. What I thought I saw was a kid with tactical vest, uh, pants with lots of pockets, and I thought I saw a gas mask and a hat. Apparently, the gas mask I've been told was mistaken. He had just shooting glasses on. But one of the things I want you to understand is I'm not surprised I was off on that because he was far 20 feet away, 25 feet away when he was the closest to me. And the, it was smoky in the hallway. When I say it was smoky, I want you to think concert stage smoky. He asked me, uh, do you know where he is, what he's using? I'm like, yeah, he's... Uh, what is he wearing? I'm like, he's wearing black jacket, all tactical vest on, and then he's on the third floor. And they're like, all right, that's good, thank you. I was in my classroom, and I'm sitting in the first seat, and it was right next to the door, and we heard a couple loud noises in a row, and we thought it might have been something upstairs. And about 30 seconds later, we walk out of the classroom casually, thinking it was nothing. And then you hear four or five gunshots, and I was with four other girls, and everybody else ran inside the classroom, but I've already walked out too far, really close to the building. And since it was a fire drill, we walked right into the parking lot over there, and then we realized we were in the wrong zone. So we walked in front of the building again, and we walked to the other parking lot, and. There was a golf cart that came with Mr. Hickson and Coach Vice and another police officer screaming at us that it was a code red. And I ran into the only classroom that had no windows with my friend and my three other classmates. And I'm staring at him thinking, why is the police here? This is strange, because he's in full metal garb, helmet, face mask, uh, bulletproof armor, shooting this rifle that I've never seen before. I didn't know that at the time, because he had a mask on, so I didn't know who it was. He was black from head to toe, black vest, black pants. Tonight, though, we're learning some disturbing new details. According to a source close to the investigation, we're told that the suspect went to the school with extra clothes and with a rifle in the duffel bag. After the shooting, we're told that he left the, ri the rifle, dropped the rifle, changed his clothes, and then evacuated with the rest of the students who were all running out of the school. Now, that's when the source told us that he called his father, told his father what happened, and the father, in turn, called the police. Shortly after that was the takedown. He basically gave up, changed, and decided to flee with everybody else. 
Okay, he advised he's on the third floor, moving down to the second. May advise he's got him on video, he's wearing a gas mask. May advise he's got him on video, he's wearing a gas mask. May advise he's got him on video, he's wearing a gas mask.